Bonjour les gars. Today we're diving into a pretty exciting topic, one everyone's love, foliage. More specifically, the brand new procedural vegetation editor in Unreal Engine 5.7. Yes, you heard that right. You can now create and author your own vegetation directly inside Unreal. Let me show you how it works. So what's this new procedural vegetation tool all about in the 5.7 preview? Simply put, it lets you build foliage, like trees, directly in Unreal as skeletal meshes, and you can procedurally generate them using a node-based system just like in PCG graphs. You can easily tweak shapes, parameters, and tons of different settings. No external DCC needed anymore. Everything happens right here in Unreal. Let's get started and explore this new experimental tool. First, activate the procedural vegetation editor plugin. Then, head over to your project settings and make sure Nanite Foliage is turned on. That's all you need to set it up. Once that's done, open your content browser, right-click, and you'll find a new asset type called Procedural Vegetation under the Foliage section. That's where the fun begins. You'll see four templates ready to go. You can start with one of those to learn the logic or build your own setup from scratch. Let's pick one and break down what's happening behind the scenes and what assets are involved in this new feature. After opening your procedural vegetation assets, you'll see a familiar setup. A graph, a viewport, a details panel, and an attributes panel, just like PCG. Right-click anywhere in the graph, and you see all the available nodes. It's still early, so there aren't too many yet, but trust me, it's already enough to start experimenting and creating some really cool results. Everything in this template starts with the procedural vegetation preset loader node. When you select it, you notice it references a data asset one that's included by default inside the plugin folder. The data asset is what defines your foliage instances and materials, and it's also where you can create variants, letting you generate multiple variations of your vegetation from a single graph setup. Of course, you can start from scratch, if you prefer. Just go to your content browser, and in the MISC section, create a new data asset. Then make sure to select procedural vegetation presets, and you're good to go. All right, let's get back to our templates for now. When you open the plugin folder, you notice something very different from how we usually handle foliage in Unreal. This time, we're working with skeletal meshes. Yes, the trees here are actually skeletal meshes with bones. And that, my friends, opens up a ton of possibilities. Going back to the graph, the idea is to pick one of your variant skeletons and then adjust and iterate on it using a series of modifier nodes. You've got four key nodes here that help you shape your tree in different ways. For example, the Curve node lets you trim or reshape your tree with four presets available in the dropdown. And of course, you can stack multiple Curve nodes for more detailed control here. Gravity does exactly what you expect, bending branches downward, while Phototropic works in the opposite direction, simulating the way branches grow towards the light. Then there's the Scale nodes, which becomes super handy when paired with the mannequin reference, giving you a true sense of scale compared to human. And finally, the Remove Branches node offers five different modes to selectively prune your tree, perfect for adding variation and making each tree feel truly unique. Then comes the Mesh Builder step. That's where you actually generate the tree's mesh based on different settings and materials. This is where your data asset really comes into play, since it references all the folders we saw earlier in the plugin. Same things goes for the next few steps, so make sure to follow the same folder structure and mesh setup if you want everything to work properly. Hopefully, we'll get more presets like this in Fab soon, so we can dive even deeper into the system. You can really fine-tune your tree here, down to the branch subdivisions, if you're aiming for ultra-realistic results or specific visual styles. Next up, we've got the bone reduction nodes. This one's super useful for optimizing your tree by cutting down on unnecessary bones. It basically helps you keep things efficient without losing too much detail. The remove branches node earlier also affect this, so the two go hand in hand when it comes to keeping your foliage clean and optimized. The foliage palette node references all the different foliage instances stored in the plugin folder. This is interesting to check out because if you want to make your own custom setup, you'll need similar meshes, small branches, clusters, and leaf geometry. Everything is actual 3D geometry here, no opacity masks, which means everything is nanite ready. So yes, it's heavy in polygons, but that's what gives you both great visuals and solid optimization. Then we've got the Foliage Distributor nodes. This one controls how your foliage instances are spread across the tree. The main settings let you increase or trim the amount of foliage, but if you enable override distribution, you get full control over scaling, angles, and placement. Basically, every small detail. 
And finally, we reach out the output node, and that's where you define where your tree will be saved in the content browser, give it a name, and choose whether you want it as a skeletal mesh or even a static mesh. You can even export it as a nanite foliage asset with options for different preservation types, including the brand new voxelized type. From there, you can export your creation using the button up here, or just hit Ctrl plus E for a quick shortcut. You can export a single tree or even batch export everything at once if you've got multiple variations ready to go. Once that's done, here's what you get with the skeletal mesh export. The mesh itself, along with its skeleton, just like any regular SKM asset in Unreal. Now you can simply drag and drop this asset into your scene, or take things a step further by using PCG. With a PCG graph, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. If you check out the asset zoom map in the plugin folder, you find a great example setup. It includes a PCG graph with all the necessary nodes starting with the raycast type, so it's not limited to landscapes. Basically, if you place any shapes underneath the PCG assets and regenerate it, your foliage will adapt perfectly to that shape. There's also a handy wind actor in there that uses a material parameter collection to control things like wind strength and direction. Depending on how you set it up, you'll see your trees react naturally with dynamic motion that feels really organic. It's honestly pretty impressive to see how flexible and powerful this new system already is. Finally, since we're dealing with skeletal meshes, I wanted to try something a little different. Why not push it further and use control rig physics on it, right? It's such a fun idea. Imagine your trees or plants reacting dynamically using the same system you use for characters. Let's give it a shot. Here, I just reused the same function I showed in my control rig physics video with Patrick and targeted a single branch. By adding some controls to the roots and the base of the focus branch, or branches, voila, fully manageable foliage through control rig. Who would have thought? <laughs> this is so cool, man. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Don't forget, it's still experimental, but I hope this video will help you better understand and reproduce everything you need to create your own vegetation in Unreal. As always, don't hesitate to subscribe and leave a like because, as you know, it's really important for the community and for us. And if you're watching this video on your cell phone, you have a new little tab called Boost. Don't hesitate to use it. We will gain visibility at some points, and that's also really important for us. Thanks again, and see you next week for a new one. Ciao.